In this second cabinet tutorial we're going to look at ways that we can customise what we've already done, edit the appearance, add some shelves in and start building our own personal ideas on these Ivar inspired cabinets. So first of all, this finger grip just doesn't work, the one that we did before. You can't even get your fingers in there to open it in the first place. So let's go ahead and start to edit that. If we find the place where we'd started, it's actually sketch 3. So hover over sketch 3, right click and we can edit and that will bring up the sketch that we started. To make this easier to work on, I want to view it square on from the top. So I'm going to click top in the cube in the top right hand corner of the screen and then zoom in using the middle, the middle mouse button to scroll and fill the screen as much as I can. And to make this work, I'm just going to move this in further essentially. So if I move that into 18 millimeters and then I'm just going to create a round out here and fill it this corner as well and we've got a tool called sketch fill it so we don't have to wait until we've done that in 3d and then round it off we can use the sketch fill it tool as well so I can turn this corner with a sketch fill it but only once I've actually drawn the lines to connect it so this is where we're going to do it very slightly differently we're going to connect the line into there because we're quitting away all of this part now I'm going to bring it past where I need bring that down as well across to here and then back up again so you know it is it is bigger than what I need but that's on purpose because if I'm cutting the bit away anyway all that extra is going to make no difference whatsoever so now using the sketch fillet tool I can actually round the corner between there and I'm going to change that radius just to be two millimeters or so so that fits onto that section the next part is rounding this section here but before I do that I need to know how far that is away from the edge so if I use my dimension tool from the top I'm going to measure this edge to this edge of the door and at the minute it's quite a random 13 so we're just going to make that 15 and then click the tick I can then in fact I've done that very slightly wrong I do apologize I'm going to go back now into the sketch I'm going to edit I haven't put the fillet in there, the sketch fillet, so I'm going to use a sketch fillet tool and add that onto that corner. And two is absolutely fine for this one as well. So I'll be cutting that all away and making the finger groove for you to open and close the door. And I'm going to click tick. What's that? What that's done now though is actually remembered that I'd added some fillets on before. So the fillets that I added on before are still on my features pane, so I'm going to delete those. And I'm going to redo them. So if I delete that fillet, you can see now that the cupboard or the cabinet, the opening that I've done with the sketch fillet looks far more like the actual Ivar cabinet and allows you to put your fingers in and actually open the door. So it's much, much better. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and change the color of the parts. And before I go too far, I'm going to rename the parts too. So part one, right click on it and rename. That is actually the cabinet or the carcass. And then on the parts, I've got the left door and I've got the right door. So I'll go ahead and rename them. It makes it easier as you're moving through if you've named everything. In an ideal world, if time was not a factor at all, we'd name absolutely everything going through, especially if you're working collaboratively with someone as well. So let's change the appearance. All of this is going to be timber. So I'm holding down shift on my keyboard. I'll select all of the parts from the part list, right click, and I'm going to edit the appearance for the three parts. Select a wooden shade and click tick. So I've now got a wooden looking cabinet. The next part is I want to add some legs onto my cabinet as part of my custom design. So I'm going to go ahead and put some just small legs, small round cylinders coming out of the base. So I'm going to click on a base to do my drawings on and I'm going to look at this from the bottom. So I'm going to start my sketch and I'm going to draw my cylinder. So I'm going to draw a circle first. Dimension the circle so we know how large that's going to be. I'm going to make it 75 millimeters and then I'm going to measure the distance from the edge. Um, again, at 75 should work and the distance from that top edge as well as 75. Now what we can do is finish extruding all of this, make it look exactly how we want it and then pattern it 
to create the other legs or draw them all at the same time. I'm going to use the pattern tool just as an extra tool for us to use in this tutorial. So finish the sketch, rotate it to a 3D view. I'm going to look at it in, in a normalized kind of isometric view. Extrude my sketch 4 and I'm going to put that in at 100 millimeters and see how it looks. Okay, that doesn't look too high, it looks about right. I'm going to tick that as happy. I actually though want it to have a taper to it. So I'm going to use the chamfer tool. I don't just want the edge angled like that. I want it to have two distances. So the amount it's going in is going to be around 30 millimeters. And the amount going down is all the way to the base there, which is 100 millimeters there. So you can see we've got that tapered look. The distance one, 30 millimeters, looks too much at the moment. So I'll take that down to 20 and we've got a nicer design. We can then just round this edge to finish that off a little bit more professionally. Okay, so we have the leg on our cabinet. There's one more issue just cropped up there. The leg is permanently attached to this cabinet, so I'm not overly happy with that. I'm actually going to change the extrude, right click and edit, and I'm going to create it as its own part. So that's going to be a new part completely on the list there when you edit, and then we can click the green tick. And we're happy with that now being a brand new part. The next part of the tutorial, we'll look at patterning that leg across and down. So we'll have four of them on the cabinet together. Before we do our patterning, let's just get in them good habits. Rename part four as leg one and press enter. We can now use that pattern tool. So we're going to use the linear pattern tool. So you've got a couple of options with patterns. Um, that are all suitable in different applications. We're using linear in this case. So we're going to use linear pattern. And at the top here, you can pattern features, faces, or parts. In our case, we finished the whole part. We don't want to just extrude, um, pattern the extrude. We want to pattern the whole of the leg. So we're sticking with part, and it's going to create new ones. So the entities, are what, what, that's wanting you to select the leg. And then the direction is any line in the same direction as what you want the pattern to go. So we will select now direction and then select a line going in the direction that we want. If we look at it from the bottom, we'll be able to make sure our spacing works. So we know it's 1200 wide, so I think 1050 should work, leaving a 75 gap from each side. Um, and we can then tick that. We now have our two legs. We'll rename leg two. And once that's done, we can now do the linear pattern tool again. The entities are leg one and leg two. And then we're going direction, any line again in a direction that you want to pattern. We know it's 400, so I think 250 should give us the gap that we're after. We can click tick and you can see the extra parts are now created that we can rename as leg three. And part seven becomes leg four. So if we look at that now in our 3D view, we can see we're quite happy with the small legs that we've put onto the cabinet and we can move on to looking at the shelves in the next tutorial, making sure that we're, we're creating the essence of these IKEA cabinets where everything is adjustable and can be moved to your own taste. So we want to make sure that we can do the same with the shelves, that we're making them fully adjustable.